All right, so we are back in the studio. I just got off the plane. There's news abound, so I had to get it back to you guys. But before we do anything, I just want to say thank you to every single one of you guys that, that allowed me to propel to the place I'm in now. I mean, look where we were a year ago and two years ago. three We could go down the line, but ever since we started this thing in 2017, it was you guys that, that allowed me to be who I am and get to where I get to. So I just want to take this moment to say thank you to all of you because you all did this. I also want to say thank you to DAZN and Misfits Boxing for the opportunity. Of course, without them, I would have never had the ability to do what I did last week. And this is video one of two on the day because we are going to break down some of those fights that I was just involved in. But video number one is a bombshell because Jake Paul, who has been rumored and now confirmed, to be fighting in October. Jake's opponent just got leaked two days as I'm recording this, and it's none other than the Spider Anderson Silva. Woo! And I know there's gonna be people saying things about this, and I'm gonna tell you guys all the good and bad about what comes from picking Anderson Silva in his next fight, but I do think this is a dangerous fight for Jake Paul. Why? Feels pretty good to say this once again in the home studio, so the breakdown... Let's go. All right, so yes, Jake Paul has chosen Anderson Silva as his next fight. This was leaked by Keemstar, and again, shout out to Keem. He's smashing the game on the headlines and getting the stories as always, but Happy Punch Promotions is going like this right now, so can't say anything but respect to what they're doing over there. This story is basically as certified as my dance move when Slim was making his walk out on fight night this Saturday. By the way, shout out to my man Haseem Rahman Jr. for posting that little golden nugget for everyone to see. Appreciate you. But for all intents and purposes, that is the fight. and. Listen, I know what everyone is going to say about this, so let's talk about it now. Jake's not fighting a boxer. Why isn't he fighting a boxer? This is my problem with that statement. The semantics game of making Jake fight a boxer isn't something I ever understand. The question or the task in front of Jake shouldn't be fight a boxer. The real question or the progression for Jake should be fight an opponent with better skills and more experience than your last opponent. Like, would you rather see Jake fight a low-level pro boxer that either doesn't have a winning record or is just starting out with not as much experience as a UFC legend, and I understand it's MMA, but a striking guru for over 20 years in Anderson Silva. Even in boxing, the skill levels wouldn't be the same. Anderson Silva is just as much a boxer as Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is because he beat him soundly. And let's be honest about something, we've seen what pro boxers look like when they are nowhere near as skilled as the YouTuber they're fighting, and they're not prepared in any way for the moment of thousands of people in an arena sold out in the main event. We just saw it this Saturday. This is why I don't get into the semantics game of Jake should fight a boxer. Why isn't he fighting a boxer? He's fighting a man that arguably is a better boxer than most people that you guys would have him fight at this level. And this is not me running defense for Jake. I'm just saying what it is. Anderson Silva is a highly decorated striker across multiple decades. I can't say it any different than that. And he's around Jake's weight, so we're not talking about a weight bullying situation or cutting a ton of weight like Rockman Jr. was going to have to do. And yes, I'll concede that he's 47 years old and he's not what he was in his prime. And he had been stopped a couple couple times on his way out of the UFC and even him not being in his prime watching him transition into the boxing realm and do what he's done to Julio Cesar Chavez and other guys that he's just basically played with or the Tito Ortiz fight which good god again the Florida Commission just gives zero f they allowed Tito to fight when he could barely speak. Evander Holyfield couldn't remember what room he was in. Don't ever do that again. But Henderson in his sleep can win those fights. This is a real test for Jake as the level of striking talent and experience is so much higher than Jake's ever seen. Now, as far as the fight goes, it's going to be hard to see Jake sitting and outpointing Anderson Silva round after round. Of course, what Jake and their team see is a guy that is a little bit older, a guy that has been stopped on his way out of the UFC, and maybe his chin is a bit suspect for 185, which again is what Jake will be fighting at for this camp, according to his camp. So maybe Jake cutting that weight down, he's going to try to up his work rate, but we all know that the devastation still lies in that right hand, and ultimately, that will be the shot they look to go to. The overhand right is his bread and butter. He's going to try to knock out an older, less prime version of Anderson Silva, but still, this is the toughest fight. I've ever seen Jake in and this is why I respect it because listen as much as you may not like Jake he could have easily gone out and done what you guys said 
go get a pro boxer. Regardless if it was an undefeated pro boxer with wins against trash cans or a pro boxer with less wins than losses or a retired MMA legend who does happen to be one of the best strikers to ever live, there is always going to be people that are going to complain about what Jake's doing and who his opponents are. But as far as legitimacy goes, this is one of the guys at the top of the list. I would say Anderson is better skill for skill as a boxer than Nate Diaz, than Tyron Woodley, than Tommy Fury at this point, and there's others in there that could have been rumored as Jake's next fight that I don't know would match the skill level of Anderson. As far as the available options here, Tommy Fury, Anderson Silva, those were kind of the only guys right now, not looking into the future. And after a couple of swings and misses with Tommy Fury, we've already seen how Jake tries to hit a baseball. You don't want to go for strike three there. So a fresh opponent, a new perspective, and a new challenge for Jake is something I have no problem with. Now, I don't know the rounds or anything like that yet. I'm assuming Jake's going to stick with eight or maybe move to 10. Either way, this is a legitimate test and one that's going to prove what level Jake's striking skill is on because we haven't necessarily seen someone that's more skilled than Jake yet. Tyron Woodley was, in my opinion, not a great skilled boxer just yet. It was his first couple times doing it. Ben Askren, we're going to forget that fight ever f***ing happened. Nate Robinson got left with drool dribbling like the basketball he used to play with. No one's been able to supersede Jake's skill for skill Anderson absolutely will. So Jake's going to have to find another way to solve that puzzle piece. And again, I say it's going to be in that right hand and seeing if he can measure time and set up the MMA legend to eat one of these. And it does just take one and maybe put him away. But you guys let me know what you think. There it is. Anderson Silva, Jake Paul. Do you like the opponent choice? And if you don't, tell me specifically why. If it's because he's old, fair play, but I need something specific. Just throwing out the words pro and boxer are not enough to discredit Jake for taking an Anderson fucking Silva fight. This is huge because Anderson Silva is as skilled if not more so than most of the names that you would probably throw out anyway but outside of that I gotta stop this recording because I got another one to film for you guys today I'm gonna get right to that and there's more news coming out this week more breakdowns for you guys I'm back in the studio I'm gonna be here for a while and when October 29th comes around, I'll be the big 3-0. So with my elderly wisdom, what do I think happens when that fight actually gets made official? I don't have the answers, but I guess we'll find out.